I stayed in a ghastly hotel by the ground. They could only have me for one night. And I asked them to book me into another. So they booked me, I think it was the Albany. And it was a high-rise hotel. And I went round there and I had dinner. I'd had a few drinks with the players. And um, I had a bath before dinner, put on a clean shirt. And I drank a bottle of wine. I, read, I can remember the book. It was an Agatha Christie. And I read it from cover to cover and went up to bed about quarter past 12. Fed in, not, not, I wasn't high, but I was very nice to thank you. And the problem started because ever since I was uh, 12 and my mama, whoever had said, you needn't wear your pajamas, I always slept with nothing on, which is a perfectly natural thing to do. And I got into bed and um, went to sleep like a good one, and it was marvellous, and woke up at 5 to 3, and um, I had my watch on my wrist. And um, the call of nature was acute, so I got out of bed, and, you know, the bathroom's always in the same place in these instant hotels, and so I, d I thought, well, look, no hands, I can do it, and showed off, and so I didn't turn the light on. I just went to where I knew the bathroom would be, and I opened the door, and I'm bleary-eyed, I looked out, and I saw sort of a wall in front, I thought, and I looked to the right, and I looked to the left, and I couldn't see anything. Then I heard a great clonk of a weighted door shutting and realized that I was absolutely stark while naked on the, first fl on the ninth floor of the Auburn Hotel in Nottingham, <laughs> which actually is a little bit of a predicament, isn't it? You, you, you don't quite know what to do. And uh, there I was, and, and rather <laughs> thick with sleep, you know, and, 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 and I looked around thinking there might be a, 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 what, a staircase. There wasn't. I then thought there might be a fire escape. I couldn't find one of them. So then I did begin to scratch, scratch my head, and I suddenly saw it outside a, a door, a sort of angle uh, outside a door. I saw a tea tray. It might have been coffee, I don't know. And I picked up the coffee cup, and underneath was one of those folded paper doilies. You know, things they are tiny, but you open them out. And That's right. What I did was actually, I stood up and I thought, well, and I sort of held it there. And I mean, I'm a modest chap by nature and I don't show off at all. And I thought, well, that'll just about do. And as long as no one looks around the edges. And, and, and I then thought, well, the only thing to do is, is to give the night porter a thrill of a lifetime. So I pressed the lift and it came up like a good one. And I got in and I was, I was a little bit nervous, you can imagine. And there I was at the back and there were, there were 14 bedroom floors. And then there was a, an R floor and a small EST for restaurant, a bar, big B and a small AR for bar, and a big R and a small EC for reception. And with great care, circumspect and precision because my life depended on it. I pressed the bottom R with the small EC and the door shut and we went down the first nine floors like really it was tremendous. I really honestly felt between floors two and three that I was might have been in the English derby coming into Tatnam Corner lying third with a gap in front of me and Lester Pickett on top and quite suddenly it stopped and that rather startled me and I didn't think we'd got to the bottom R and I looked up you know the lift thing and sure enough it was the top R with the small EST and I was shivering there. You know how lift your doors slightly judder when they open? This slightly juddered and it opened and and Positively surging towards me, surging towards me, were eight ladies in long dresses and eight men in dinner jackets. There were a party just breaking up. Well, there was I, 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 and I was, I was faced with an unplayable lie in golfing terms, and I simply didn't know what to do. I stood there, and they came to, they, they were well oiled, I may say, and when they came to me out, and they started to shout the odds. And eventually, after what seemed like, like 155 years, a little man in glasses came up to me and he said, excuse me, sir, he said, you look in a spot of bother. I said, how very swift of you to spot it. I said, yes. I said, the chap I'm really after, the chap I'm really after is the night porter. And I realized as soon as the words were out of my mouth that, uh, that I could have rephrased it to advantage and rather more successfully. However, he said to me, he said to me, don't worry. He said, the night porter's over here. I'll get him. He said, press the button that says door open. Well, there I was. And I had to get, get the synchronization right. I had to do that. And to the intense disappointment of about 35,000 people, because that brought the gate I mean, people were charging 10 bob a time for a look. I got it right, and eventually the night porter came. And he thought, he took one look at me, and he thought, this is, this is a rum, and this isn't right. So eventually he pressed nine, where I was, floor nine. Well, of course, people were running from floor to floor, and I'd pressed the bottom one, so he went, oh, it was awful. Eventually I got to my, into my room, and, and, and that was all right, and I went to bed. I, the next morning I went down to see the general manager, who had become a friend, and I said, look at my dear thing, I said, I'm most awfully sorry. He said, well, actual, actual fact, he said, I thought the whole thing was really rather funny. And I said, oh, well, the house but he said, I've got one thing I would like to say to you. I said, well, fire away, I think. And he said, well, in my experience, he said, in my limited experience, he said, most people, he said, are recognized by their faces. He said, don't you think you should have got your splendid paper doily and done that with it? <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, true story. Henry, uh, thank you very much for talking to us. I've, um, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually given the brief to talk to you briefly about cricketing matters oh. for about five or six minutes or so. We were going to play some more highlights of the Bicentennial Test. Be, be, before the uh, oh, midday Lord, news, I? but uh, unfortunately we've sort of gone over time, but not to worry, it's most entertaining. Have I put my foot in it again? No, far from it. Um, I would remind you, though, that it is Sunday morning. This is New Zealand, but I'm sure it was uh, delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, let's take a quick look at it.